Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248. 248- Five five seven thirty three hundred, and now stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Good morning, morning. everybody. It's Friday, January 15, twenty twenty one, and this is the Ray Hanania Show. I'm Ray Hanania, a special U.S. correspondent and op-ed columnist for the Arab News newspaper. The Ray Hanania Show is brought to you on WNZK AM 690 in Detroit, Michigan at 8 a.m. in Detroit, 1 p.m. in London, 3 p.m. in Jerusalem, 4 p.m. in Riyadh. we got to do something about all these time zones. We should just have one time zone. So what if people got to get up in the middle of the night? I don't know. I've done it. 4 p.m. in Riyadh, 5 p.m. in Dubai. And, of course, on Radio Bellity and the U.S. Arab Radio Network, brought to you by my friend Layla El Husseini. Our show is simulcast live on U.S. Arab Radio Facebook page this morning at facebook.com slash U.S. Arab Radio, if you want to watch me, okay? Um, so, and listen to the show. If you're outside of Detroit, or maybe you're fleeing Detroit, I don't know, maybe you're leaving Detroit or and just as you get outside of the broadcast range you want to still catch up you can just hook up on uh, Facebook at uh, US Arab Radio the US Arab Radio Network was launched in 2005 by journalist and radio network founder and my friend Layla Hosseini in an effort to energize and empower Arab Americans so this morning we got a really interesting show um, and just to let you know that the uh, Ray Hanania show that I'll be launching, uh, sponsored by the Arab News newspaper, I believe is going to begin in February. So uh, hopefully that's going to be like Wednesday morning. And of course, uh, Layla told me the great news, the expansion to uh, evenings. So this show is rebroadcast at 5 p.m. on WNZK 690 AM radio in Detroit. So it's on at 8 a.m. in Detroit. Remember, that's Eastern Time because there are people out here in Chicago who are waking up at uh, 7 a.m., an hour ahead of time. Um, So it's broadcast in uh, Eastern Detroit at uh, 8 a.m. in the morning, and it'll be rebroadcast. And this is not just my show, but every Monday through Friday that uh, the U.S. Air Radio is on air uh, it'll be rebroadcast from 5 to 6 p.m., I believe, is the correct time. So uh, our producer is Mike Chupka, who is uh, going to answer our phone calls and put you on the air if you want to call in at 248-557-3300, 248-557-3300. This morning, we're going to be talking about censorship on social media and the news media, the protests in Washington, D.C., and the upcoming Biden administration's commitment to Arab Americans and Muslim Americans, and just the Biden administration in general. And we're going to talk about Trump because, you know, there's this whole thing uh, about how, oh, yeah, Ray, you were a big supporter of Trump. And yeah, okay, you could say that, but the reality was that I was a big hater of Hillary Clinton, okay? (laughs) So I had no choice, and I said that millions of times. But you know how people, they only read like one line in a paragraph. You say something nice about Trump, and you're a Trump lover. And I don't really care. This isn't like Jesus Christ and Peter denying that he knew Jesus three times, and I'm not even saying Trump is close to Jesus. Trump was pretty much unhinged most of the four years that he was in office, although I had hope 
that he was going to give us an opportunity either to change things or shake up the game board. And I and that was the phrase I used back in 2017, that Trump is going to shake up the game board. And I think Trump has shaken up the game board and pulled the rug out from under the uh, Republican Party. But I think he's also exposed the lies of the Democratic organization and the Democratic Party. And we're talking about the national level. We're not talking about you know, the local level. We're talking about Democrats and Republicans on the national level. What's the difference? Are you freaking kidding me? Like there's a difference? So for the past four years, I've been arguing that Arabs and Muslims, this is my argument back in 2017, despite Trump's rhetoric, we should lobby and push him because he's malleable meaning that we're able to manipulate him and work with him. Certainly the Israelis did it. The Israelis jumped all over Donald Trump. They invested half, I would say maybe a third of all of Trump's money came from Sheldon Adelson, who, by the way, passed away this week. Um, he put so much money into Trump, he basically bought him off. And what did the Arabs do? We did nothing except what we always do, right? scream, yell, emotionally, stomp our feet, call each other names, and then look into our own community and hate me, hate you. You know, that's the way Arabs are. It's sad, but that's what we do. Um, we don't do anything productive, but we sure love to profit from suffering. And the suffering is unjustified and wrong, but we're incapable of stopping it. So what we do is because we're victims and because nobody will listen to us we will go out there and we will beat up on ourselves we'll find people in our community and I'm a good target because there are very few Arab Americans who express their opinions in columns um, in a balanced centrist way because I'm not really a Republican and I'm not really a Democrat <laughs> Uh, and I don't care what you say. You may like some of my views. You may like, dislike some of my views. I'm right in the middle. And I call out uh, Trump, and I call out the Democrats, and I call out the Republicans. I call out Biden. And you know what? People don't like it to be called out, so they'll use whatever excuse they want to attack you. So, no, I'm not a big Trump fan, and I've never really been a Trump fan. But he was the better alternative to Hillary Clinton, hands down. Because I remember what Hillary Clinton did to Palestine when she was Secretary of State, when she was working with Obama. I remember how, what her husband did, Bill Clinton, and a lot had to do with her because she lobbied Bill. She had influence over Bill. And the way he pulled the rug out from under us and blamed the Palestinians for the collapse of the peace process because he wanted to save his administration. So, yeah, maybe that sounds like I'm being pro-Trump. But who else is out there? Now Biden's there, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be pro-Biden because I, he's made promises that I want to see be delivered. And I'll tell you what, when he doesn't deliver them, because I'll be honest with you, the Democrats prior to Trump were worse because they smiled to your face and they lied behind your back. And the Republicans have done the same thing. These are the extremists on both sides, the far left and the far right. In the middle are what I think are the just people, and they're the real victims. They don't get the truth anymore from the biased, racist news media. They don't get the truth. What they get is manufactured, manipulated truth. And we're going to talk about some of that during the radio show today because I argue, and you can read my columns, the ArabDailyNews.com, ArabNews.com, and my mainstream columns at SuburbanChicagoLand.com, at the regional newspapers, the Southwest News Herald, the Des Plaines Valley News, uh, the Reporter newspapers. There are a bunch of papers that I write for, and I cover mainstream and Middle East. And you could read the same message, whether it's focused on Arabs about the Middle East or whether it's focused on all of us, because... I'm a veteran of Vietnam War, like a lot of Arabs. My father, my uncle, they served during World War I, uh, World War II. And uh, we're very patriotic. We're part of this country. We're no different than any other ethnic group. Um, but we are discriminated against tremendously, not just by whites, but by African Americans, by Asians, even, unfortunately, by Hispanics and all these groups. They discriminate against us because this country is built on ethnic identity and ethnic preference. 
we have always lived in ethnocentric focus where our focus hasn't been one equal country where everybody is equal because they always say that you know everyone's equal in the in the United States although some are a little more equal than others but the fact is we've been ethnocentric and what's that what that means is that Italians live together pretty much Arabs live together, Jews live together, Hispanics live together, African Americans live together, and of course there's some exceptions that spread out, right, to different areas, and uh, we emphasize our interests as ethnic and racial groups, and even religious groups. Jews live together, Jewish neighbors. There was a time in the 60s, and I wrote a book about this, you can go to my website at hananiah.com, to check out everything, by the way, all my podcasts, all my radio shows, all my columns and my writing. But I wrote a book called Midnight Flight, which is about white flight in Chicago in 1968. Go to hananiah.com. You'll catch that uh, page, Midnight Flight. Um, I think it's like 11 chapters, and it's free. I decided to just put it out there for free. And it's about how Arabs and Jews live together back in the 50s and 60s. We didn't hate each other the way we do today. And uh, sadly, and when I, when I say things like that, I don't mean every Arab and every Jew hates each other. I mean that there's an overall blanket of hate over our community, and there are a lot of us, like me, who don't hate other people, who don't hate Jews, who don't hate Arabs, and who don't hate Muslims, but we're caught up in this angry, hate-driven environment um, and rivalries between ethnic groups and in our ethnic groups some of them rise and some of them fall and the media though is the culprit the news media now I got into the media in 1976 and because I believe that was the way to change the message that was being put out by Arab Americans and of course nobody believed me in the Arab American community they thought I was nuts they said why aren't you gonna be a doctor what are you wasting your time getting into the media and I said that's where the world in the United States starts, in the news media, in communications. So that's what I did. I got in the media, and of course, I realized quickly that the media was a racist institution. They hated me. They hated the fact that every time I would say, oh, I'm Arab, I, I want to write about something Arab, they'd go berserk. Yeah, and which, by the way, is a Scandinavian term, berserk. Um, that comes from the 10th century. I'm reading that in a, a book about the Vikings who were brutal and tough. And uh, they, the media would attack me and they'd say, you have no right, keep your opinions on your side of the typewriter. That's what they tell me. My first editor at the Southtown, great guy. Honestly, Marlon Landwehr, what a brilliant guy, very good guy. He hired me. But the first thing he said is, you're in a jungle here, you got to watch it. There are going to people, be people out to get you because you're Arab and uh, you know the Arab Israeli thing is a big deal and you're gonna get in all that so keep your views on your side of the typewriter that was the quote and I have that as a mantra over my desk behind me reminding me of that moment when I was told the very first moment I got into professional journalism that I was actually entering a war zone and that if I stepped over the line, they were going to get me. And, of course, as we know, the Sun-Times did do that after I got to the Sun-Times and worked there uh, eight years, had a blast, did some great stories covering Chicago City Hall. They loved me when I wrote about Chicago City Hall. They hated me when I said, hey, can I write about being Palestinian, <laughs> being the only Palestinian journalist in the whole freaking country? No. The answer was no. Now, that was back in the 1980s and early 1990s. Fortunately, we got a lot more Arabs that are in the media today, but they hide. You know, they use, uh, if they're from mixed marriages, they don't, and, and if their father is Arab and if their mother is Mexican, they don't use their Arab name to get into the media. They use their Hispanic name. I get that, you know, because the media is racist. And those Arabs that are on TV, like on the Today Show, um, you really don't hear those Arabs talk about Arab issues. they got to avoid that because the moment they do, they're going to be fired. They're going to be harassed. They're going to be censored. So that's what we're up against. And I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid to take on these issues. I'm not afraid to stand up to it. 
and people can say whatever they want and I try to explain to my own community Arabs and the Muslim community because most Americans think I'm Muslim even though my mother was born in Bethlehem and Jesus is my cousin okay thank you Jesus um, I try to explain to my own people the Arabs and the Muslim community that it don't get caught up in this I hate Trump crap because I'm gonna tell you what it isn't about Trump what this is about is the news media and social media controlling what you think number one and two profiting from what this all has caused because the news media is making a fortune today they were near collapse they were being bought up by five corporations control all of the media today five all the diversity in the media is gone there's no media diversity it doesn't exist it's controlled and they're profiting from these screaming headlines and now social media is another level of news media and so Social media, I think what was the term that I wrote down? Social media, Facebook and Twitter, they said, oh, we're calling for moderation. You know what moderation means? Censorship. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll open up the phone lines at 248-557-3300. We'll talk about this. And uh, we will, uh, everybody's going to get a few minutes to talk because I know we got a lot of people who want to talk. You're on uh, watching us on U.S. Arab Radio on Facebook, uh, at least until they censor us, because I have no say. They can decide who they want to censor, and I'm going to explain to you how you can find out, because most Arabs, by the way, don't realize this, but you have been throttled. Most Arabs on Facebook and Twitter have been throttled. Some have been shadow banned. I've been throttled, and I'm going to tell you how you can find out. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue with this, this discussion right after these ads. Thanks. Read the Arab News newspaper for the latest on the U.S. elections, the battle for president, and breaking news and unique stories on Arabs in America and the world online at arabnews.com. The Arab News newspaper is the leading English language newspaper in the Arab world with editions in France, Pakistan, Japan, Dubai, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and bureaus in London, New York, and Chicago. Join the more than 5 million people who follow the Arab News on Facebook online at arabnews.com. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of their favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your fair food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-538-9552. That number again is 248-538-9552, and the supermarket is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Nachi Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Nachi Abood now, 734-744-9796. New Concept Products and Design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New Concept Products and Design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Abood, 734-744-9796. Enjoy the first Syrian-style cuisine in Michigan. At Damas Cuisine and Catering, you'll find a wide selection of Syrian foods and sweets in our menu, like frike, poise, grape leaves with steak, mashawi platter, hot mahashi, char-grilled kebab, shawarma, and much more. Get super-fast delivery from Damas Cuisine and Catering right to your door. Order online at damascuisine.com forward slash menu and track your order live. Damas Cuisine and Catering, 28841 Orchard Lake Road in Farmington Hills. Call 248-987-4985. And welcome back to uh, the Ray Hanania Show here at WNZK AM 690 Radio. It's Friday, January 15th, 
2021. Our number is 248-557-3300. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how you can tell if you've been throttled, which is what Twitter and Facebook and other social media do. What they basically do is they reduce your the ability of people to find you. So it narrows your voice so that nobody hears you. So that you're like in a whisper on Twitter. And uh, then they just kind of, uh, they don't say anything to you. That's throttling. Shadow banning is when they completely block you off from everybody else. But throttling is when only a few people can find you. And they do that without even telling you. You have no idea what's going on. And there is a way to do that. But let's go to the phone lines. If Jerry's still on there, let's say to our buddy, Jerry Haba. Jerry, how you doing, my man? Good morning to you, sir. How are you? I'm good. We're in the new world. Yes, yes, indeed. I am, first of all, proud uh, of Ray Hanania being a veteran, American veteran, a true hero. I'm, I'm very proud of you, Ray. And thank you for your service for this country. And thank you for acknowledging my service. Every time somebody says, thank you for your service, I go, thank you for acknowledging my service. Because I hear that, listen, we hear that a lot today. You I think that's a way that, you know, not you, but others, they want to just kind of uh, make it sound like they really care about us. But a lot of people out there, they don't. <laughs> but it makes them, and I learned that from watching Curb Your Enthusiasm with Larry David. You got to watch that show, okay? Oh, okay, right. Okay. All right, my friend, the double standard and the fake media. All right, this has been bothering me a lot. All right, how is the fake media uh, put the incident of last Wednesday in the Capitol uh, when they stormed the, the building, the Congress? All right, I know that was bad. Yes, nobody liked violence. This country was built on democracy. And if you have anything against the government with a peaceful uh, uh, demonstration to express that you don't like certain things, but violence is not accepted from any, any sort, any uh, black and white and brown, uh, Christian, Jews, Muslim, we do not accept violence. But I agree with you. I totally agree with you. But right, the fake media, and especially, like you say, uh, those uh, social uh, 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 media, uh, the uh, from uh, Google uh, to Amazon to Apple to Twitter, you know, right? Shame on them, those people, when they were able to shut the voice of uh, President Trump. I'm not trying to defend him. But right, if they could do that to President Trump, they could. Absolutely. You are so right. Can you? They could do that to anybody. In fact, they could do that to you and no one would notice. We notice when they do it to Trump. Freedom of right? They do it to Arabs all the time. And you know what the Arabs are screaming about? Oh, we're going to take down Trump. We're going to do this. We're going to. And they forget that the media is the real enemy. Trump is a product of the media fight. He's a product of the fight that the media started four or five years ago. And this is like politics that hates us. They hate you. And I know that technically you're not really Arab. You're Assyrian, correct, Jerry? Uh, from Iraq, Baghdad, Chaldean. So you're Chaldean. And I know that some Chal many Chaldeans and Assyrians always tell me we're not really Arab. We're Middle Eastern people. But can I tell you something? People in the U.S., the mainstream America, and especially the media, they don't see the difference. They say Jerry Haba, Ray Hanania, Osama bin Laden, all these guys, Muslims, Christian, Arabs, we're all the same. We're all one people. That's what they say because it profits from hatred. I blame. Fuel the hatred against you and me so they can make money. Mean Arab or Muslim or Chaldean or Assyrian, the media. Right, our local media, with my respect to you, they are not presenting uh, or making effort to explain to average American what is the people in the Middle East. They do not. Of course put not. Why would they do that? There's no money in it. Believe me, if there were money in it, they would. 
But Arabs and people from the Middle East don't understand how to manipulate communications. They don't understand the media. They think that, you know, truth is the, you know, the weapon to combat lies. But the truth is that the media doesn't care about the truth. The media cares about what sells. What's the message that's going to make you pick up their paper, turn on their TV station, use their social media, and if whatever message that is, good, bad, or ugly, that's what they're going to put out there. Mr. Ray Hanania, the way the media, they are showing President Trump, they show him as a Rambo, as a monster, as a danger person. Come on, give me a break. Yeah. Listen, Jerry, thank you. Hey, listen, Jerry, thank you for calling. I, I agree with you. And, and I know that this isn't about supporting the things that Trump did that we don't like. You know, there are many things that he's done we don't like, but there are many things that he's tried to do that I do like, and I'm sure you do too. And But it's the media hypocrisy. Jerry, thank you very much. Jerry Haba brought up a great point um, before I get into throttling. He brought up the point that uh, the way they portrayed the D.C protest raise your hand if you actually read what president trump said okay i see two people out of a million all right because nobody really read or saw what he said because the media didn't broadcast it they censored it they took a snippet and took it out of context and exaggerated it i read every word that he said eleven thousand four hundred words you can go to hanania.com and you could read, you can go to the link there, there's a link there, and it'll take you to his DC speech. And if you want to listen, a guy rambled for 60, what was it, 74 minutes, you can listen, or you can scan through the text of his speech. And what did he say? He said, we're going to go there, and we're going to fight, and we're going to get our voices heard. And he was talking about that clip that you saw on TV. They made it sound like he was talking about, we're going to attack the Congress and the Democrats and we're going to rip them apart. He never said that. He said, we're going to go there. And he had just said, there are Republicans who don't want to stand with us and we need to show them. We need to express ourselves to them how we feel. They cut that out and they applied everything to the violence and now here's the other part of the violence that and it there was violence nobody's saying there wasn't any violence there was a lot of violence and every one of those people that engaged in violence should be arrested should be charged should be put in jail if you broke something if you attack somebody if you use violence against somebody you know five people were killed those are criminals but they represented less than five percent i'd say maybe even two percent of the protesters out of 500,000 people that were there, the media said tens of thousands were there in D.C. on January 6th. Tens of thousands, they said. How many people were in the Congress building? How many people engaged in the damage? Let's even just say 10,000 of those protesters. Let's even say 10,000. What about the 490,000 who were expressing and following their constitutional right to protest and reject what Congress was doing. They had every right to do that. And you know why I say that? Because that's what they were saying in the summer between May 25th and August 27th when Black Lives Matter were launching protests after the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. They rampaged and destroyed how many businesses? Do you know the Arab, the, this whole thing with George Floyd, and I'm not even saying that George Floyd deserved what happened to him. And I'm not saying the police officers didn't deserve to be held accountable and even prosecuted for excessive force. I'm saying you can't stereotype when it's convenient for you. So when it's pro-Trump protesters, you stereotype and you say, oh, they're all violent insurrectionists. They're terrorists. They're rioters. Those are the words that morons like Anderson Cooper used on his uh, platform of uh, so-called media. The guy, in my view, is disgusting. That's what they said. when they. But when... They talked about that seven hours of protests in D.C. It was the worst. Everybody was the same. When they talked about, 
I don't know what, 95 days of protest between May 25th and August 27th. And when they talked about all those protests, the Black Lives Matter, they separated the two. They said, oh, listen, the looters are not the same as the uh, protesters. The looters are violent. Let's separate the looters and arsonists. And, and the reason, and listen, I can't talk about every incident of looting because the media didn't cover it. They focused on the other half, the majority, they said, is, and I agree, fighting racism is a just cause. Fight Being just is the right thing to do. A lot of the Black Lives Matter protesters were doing the right thing. I'm not denouncing them. I'm not saying they didn't have a right to do it. What I am saying is the media looked at the two things differently. They looked at the Black Lives Matter protests and they separated the violence from the protests. And they put the protesters uh, in one big box and the violence in a small little box. And do you remember what happened? The police were told by politicians, step back, don't interfere. I know 12 Arab businesses just in Chicago. I can't speak for the whole country, but this happened across the country. 12 Arab businesses were destroyed. I knew two personally as they stood there and watched with police as looters and arsonists destroyed their businesses and nobody did anything for them. In fact, until this day, those owners are still struggling trying to put their lives back together. And people said, well, you know, when you're the victim of racism, you're going to take it out on a building. A building, destroying a building isn't the same. You remember that from a member of Congress? Destroying a building isn't the same as destroying, uh, you know, as being a violent person. They didn't say that when they were destroying the Congress right? Or Nancy Pelosi's office. What a hypocrite those people are. It's not about Trump, people. It's not about Biden. And and it is about the news media and social media and the hypocrisy and the two different standards that they use. And if you don't see it, you are going to be a slave to the media for the rest of your life. This is Ray Hanania here at the Ray Hanania Show, February, January, uh, Friday, January 15th. Uh, at WNZK AM 690 Radio. We're going to take a break right now, and then we'll continue talking. And I'm going to talk to you about throttling because you need to find out if the social media has screwed you and you don't even know it. You're posting stuff thinking that there's free speech. There's no free speech. It's not there. I'm waiting for the moment they're going to clamp down on me. But I'm going to go to other places like idobinet.com, mewe.com, Parlor.com. They've already shut down Parlor. <laughs> you know, Twitter and Facebook and the media have shut down uh, Amazon.com. Has they've shut down Parlor because they go, oh, they're inciting riots. No, they're talking about speaking out against the hypocrisy of the media, and I think that's the real issue. That's the issue they don't want you to focus on. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to be right back here at the Ray Hanania Show on WNZK AM 690 Radio right after these messages. Water covers 71% of the world and the Arab News newspaper covers the rest with breaking news from across the Arab and Muslim world and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the headlines with expert analysis and insight at ArabNews.com. Join 5 million Facebook fans who stay in touch with the Arab News, the Arab world's leading English language newspaper, online at ArabNews.com. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. When you're looking for the best in optical care, Dr. Iman Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Iman Nakash. 
See Dr. Imad Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali Abagdadi and Fatty Bonham serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali Abagdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in their authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all season guidelines and is open every day 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at H-Tech Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. And welcome back to the Ray Hanania Show. Again, it's Friday, January 15th. I am Ray Hanania and this is WNZK AM 690 Radio. Our number is 248-557-3300. We're also streaming live on U.S. Arab Radio on uh, Facebook if you want to go there. i got to check with me, we Dot com and idobinet.com. These are two alternative uh, social media sites that don't censor, but of course they're under siege because when you now say don't censor, what that means is that uh, you must be a right-wing person because you believe in the Constitution and its uh, rights that it gives you to express yourself in almost any way you want. Not every, this isn't, is there anything been violent about what I've been saying? Criticizing government, criticizing the media? No, I'm not. I'm against violence. I'm against racism. I'm against bigotry. I'm against discrimination. But you know what I'm also against? I'm against media bias. I'm against when the media decides who can say what they want and who can't. Uh, and that's terrible. And are you going to tell me that Trump was the only person saying things that quote unquote crossed the line? What about other people? I never seen the only time I saw a label like the one they put on Trump's Twitter. Uh, and you know what? I got to say, Trump was a goof. He's unhinged. He had the worst communications I've I've ever seen. It's terrible. He couldn't really get his message out. He thought he could. Why would you go to Twitter to get your message with all the power that you had? Why wouldn't you create your own platform? Why wouldn't you go someplace where they cared about you and put your power there? Instead, he sucked up to the media in the fight with the media. That was always his big mistake, thinking that he could beat the media. You can't beat the media. You need to push the media aside and create your own media. And that's what I've done. You go to my website at Hanania.com, you'll see my podcast. Two of them, one on Middle East uh, and the Arab Street Radio, and one on mainstream issues, the Ray Hanania Show. Uh, you could go to both of those. You could watch this radio show, even though it's a uh, Middle East focused and uh, in the Arab community. We talk about everything of interest because censorship of Arabs is the same as censorship of every other American in this country. You can read all my columns that I write. I write columns on mainstream issues and Middle East issues. The Middle East topics are at the ArabDailyNews.com and the ArabNews.com, which is the largest English language newspaper in the Middle East, the leading English language newspaper. And they have uh, uh, editions and bureaus in Pakistan, in Japan, in France, uh, in London, um, and we're expanding here in the U.S. Uh, just this week, my friend Ali Yunus, uh, I brought him on as a freelancer, and he's writing for the Arab News. We're building up our freelancers and writers here in the United States. We're looking for some good writers, on, and every news story has to have a focus. It is the Arab News, after all, so it has to have a focus on an Arab topic. So we're doing that, and uh, right here at the radio show, where uh, once a month and beginning in February, we'll be going back to our weekly show, uh, probably Wednesday morning, sponsored by the Arab News, to talk with uh, uh, people about different issues that are important uh, to Arab Americans. But let's go to the issue of throttling just for a moment, okay? Here's how you tell if you've been throttled. Remember, throttling means that they bring down from a 10 to a 1 your exposure, 
to everybody else, you know. So, like, if you have an account, I have, like, I don't know, what, 7,000 or 6,000 followers on Twitter, okay? So they can throttle me down to two, which means that maybe 20% of the Twitter world can find me. Or they can throttle me to five, which means that 50% of the Twitter world can find me. Or they can throttle me up to 10, which means that I'm free to say whatever I, that I want and everybody will be able to find me and read me. And I would pop up at the top of your feed. When they throttle you down, you're down at Twitter's bottom of the feed where no one can see you except your friends and maybe a few other people searching for you. They specifically look for Ray Hanania, uh, which is my handle on Twitter. That's called throttling. You know how you find out if you've been throttled? Yeah, it's simple. And this, and by the way, shadow banning is where they completely shut you off. That's a zero throttle. And you don't know it. You don't know it. So here's how you find out. You call up uh, Facebook or Twitter. All right. You go online. You check with them and say you want to advertise and promote your account. And you want you set up a budget. And you say, okay, I want to do this. I want to promote my views. And they say to you... Um, sorry, uh, your uh, ads uh, don't meet our standards. Uh, we won't be able to uh, do that. They, they'll turn back, turn away your money. <laughs> Facebook has done that twice to me. Twitter has done it to me three times. And I'm sitting there going, why wouldn't you take my money? All I want to do is promote my Twitter account. I want to tw promote my Facebook account. Mm, not the Ray Hanania page, not R.G. Hanania, which is my Facebook page, R.G. Hanania, which is probably one one way why they haven't figured out who I am, right? Because I'm going by R.G. Hanania, the G for George, not Jesus, okay? So that's why, so it's Ray Hanania, they're looking, where's that Ray Hanania? Oh yeah, he's R.G. Hanania, and of course, nobody can spell Hanania, it has too many A's in it, they think I'm Italian. So I get away with a lot, fortunately. Knock on wood. Um, so that's how you find out if you've been throttled. And rather than waiting, though, I've opened up accounts at mewe.com. M-E-W-E.com. You can go there and you can friend me there. It's a Facebook-like platform uh, where they have uncensored social media. And when I say uncensored, it's un politically uncensored. If you're going to engage in violence or threats, um, if you cross the line, you know, urging somebody to be hurt, you're going to be censored. Uh, that shouldn't be tolerated any place. Nobody tolerates that. Except the media is hypocritical. They lie about the social media they don't like, and they lie about the social media they do like. And they promote the ones they like, and they downplay the ones they don't like. There's another one called iDobinet, I-D-O-B-N-E-T. Uh, Dobinet. Let me see here. Oh, I D O B B I N A T E dot com. I think he needs to change that name, but still, I Dobinet dot com. Great place to express yourself. And I got a lot of friends over there now that are watching us and uh, supporting me. And then Parlor dot com. You saw how Amazon just shut them down. Who the heck is Amazon to decide uh, an issue of censorship? They claim, well, that's our you know, platform, we rent, you know, we lease the website to you. No, you don't lease the website to me. The web, the internet is free. The internet is for everybody. You just happen to be one of the uh, robber barons who's exploiting the internet and charging me money to be on the internet. And I'll tell you what, ComEd provides electricity to me here in Illinois and it's government regulated. Why isn't social media government regulated? Why isn't somebody there watching to decide whether uh, Amazon.com or Facebook or Twitter are violating our constitutional rights and censoring us? Because if this happened, if the tables were reversed, they'd be all over it. They'd be all over it. Our number is 248-557-3300 if you want to check in and uh, do something. Let's uh, just double check here. All right, comments. Yeah, so uh, let me just, uh, there they are. Okay, we got a lot of people. I want to shout out to my buddy Steve Newhouse. 
He has a great show too. You got to look him up on Facebook. Steve Newhouse. And his last name is N-E-U-H-A-U-S. He has a live show that he does on Facebook. And a lot of other Arabs and Americans, all of us um, who are uh, watching on Facebook at U.S. Arab Radio. And I want to thank all of you. If you have questions, you can type it there and I will ask the question. Um, of course, i got to do this whole thing myself. I don't have a producer. I really need a producer to help me with guests and managing everything. I got three screens here. I got to show you the photo I took of all this, you know, how complicated all this technology is. But Amazon doesn't have a right to say you can't be there. If there's a problem, put it out there and defend it. But that's not what they're doing. They're shutting things down. And I'll tell you what, I do blame Trump. He's in his own problems for his own fault. I do blame Pump. Pompeo. I do blame Jared Kushner. I think they caused their own problems. I don't think they did much good for us because I think that they tried to manage their own media and they were terrible and unsuccessful at it. They tried to be like the media they were criticizing instead of standing up to that media and being different than the media they were criticizing. That's their problem. You know, it's it's uh, at the 45 uh, minute uh, part of the hour we got to take another break but i'm telling you go to hanania.com get all the information we got 15 more minutes we can take your calls at 248-557-3300 if you want to do that and remember this will be podcast uh both at u.s arab media at uh, the u.s arab radio It'll be podcast, so you can listen to the show. Because I said a lot of great things at the beginning of the show. If you weren't tuned in at that time, you don't want to miss it. And it will also be podcast at thearabstreet.org, or you go to hanania.com. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue talking about censorship in the media. And maybe we'll go into what I think Joe Biden can do. Uh, for the Arab American community because the Arab American community is the parakeet in the cage. When we get screwed, really everybody else can be screwed. And I'm telling you, we are being screwed as Arab Americans in this country, not just by Republicans, but by Democrats too. I'm Ray Hanania. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back right after these messages. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American Board Certified in both of 
obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. And welcome back to the Ray Hanania Show here at WNZK AM 690 Radio. It is Friday, and uh, it's January 15th, and there you go. I just uh, was uh, posting a comment on uh, U.S. Arab Radio Facebook page, which uh, you should support. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's watching on uh, U.S. Arab Radio, a lot of people there. Um, if you go to uh, my website, uh, Hanania.com, there's a column that I wrote um, for the Arab News called What Biden's Arab-American Partnership Might Look Like. It's gotten over 12,000 reads, which is kind of nice, um, and a lot of shares. I think like about 35,000 shares, which is good. But it basically goes through you know, Joe Biden's uh, partnership uh, document that he released. Uh, that he's going to do with the Arab community. Now, l remember, let's. Every politician says they're going to, you know, be fair to everybody. But Biden, I'll give him credit. He went a little further by actually saying the four-letter word Arab. He said Arab, which is a four-letter word to most other politicians. But he said Arab, and uh, he's actually appointed a number of Arab Americans to his uh, uh, White House staff which will be taking uh, office uh, Wednesday, January 20th, you know, in about, uh, what, six days, uh, five days after today. If you include today, it's six days. So um, he'll be taking over, and the column goes through that partnership. And, you know, to be honest with you, I I'll be honest, here's what I expect is going to happen. I, I know what we want to happen as Arab Americans and Muslims, but here's what I expect will happen. We're going to go back to normal. What we had before Trump is what we're going to get. No one's going to let Biden uh, go out of his way to punish Israel for their violence against Christians and Muslim Palestinians. I, for those Americans who are non-Arab and non-Muslim, um, I'm a Christian Arab. My dad is from Jerusalem. My mother is from Bethlehem. Jesus is my cousin. And a lot of people don't realize, oh, they're Christian Arabs? Yes, there are Christian Palestinians, and we are discriminated as much against as much as Muslim Palestinians are being discriminated against. There's no difference between Christians and Muslims um, when it comes to the discrimination by Israel. They discriminate against us because we're not Jewish. Um, and, and, but there are a lot of Jews who support us lots of Jewish people in Israel and around the world who support our rights. and It's a political fight, but they want you to think it's a religious thing, anti-Semitism and all that. It's not. It's about politics. The Netanyahu government is a far right-wing fanatic government. And thanks to Barack Obama, they get like, what, $38 billion, uh, $3.8 billion a year, 38 billion over 10 years. Um, nobody punished them for killing all those civilians in the Gaza Strip. Obama failed to deliver on what he promised. His big words in his Cairo speech dropped like a thud. All right. He didn't do anything for us. He was a hypocrite. And, and that's because a lot of politicians do what they always do. They turn back in and they focus on what's important to him. And what's important to him is his legacy. Just like Bill Clinton's legacy uh, was more important to him than peace in the Middle East, he ended up giving up and blaming everything on the Palestinians and distorting the truth. And you didn't hear both sides because the media is biased. The media censors Arabs. They throttle us. That word throttle, keep that in your vocabulary, okay? Because that's what they do in the media. They throttle Arab voices. So you read like a debate between two pro-Israeli columnists or writers in the media talking about what's happening in the Middle East. You don't hear what, what's happening in the Palestinian community. 
You don't hear about the truth of the USS Liberty and what happened to that ship in during the 1967 war when I, I don't know how many, 29 or 30 some American soldiers were killed by the Israelis because they thought that we were going to blow the whistle on their plans to occupy Jerusalem. <laughs> they wanted East Jerusalem, the Israelis, and they got it. And all they had to do was shut us up. Um, so, but I think that if you go to Arab, uh, actually, if you go to Hanania.com, the link on the right side, you'll see the link to this Arab News column if you want to read it. Now, of course, I think you should read the Arab News uh, at ArabNews.com because I think you're going to get a more mainstream look at issues, not just in the Middle East, but here in the United States. But you'll see this column that I wrote about what Joe Biden is can be expected to do, and I'm hopeful he delivers. I really am. You know, I'm th th this whole thing. Like I'm, they say, oh, you're against Joe Biden. No, I'm not against Joe Biden. I'm against anybody. I'm, I'm against anybody who does things wrong. I am for anybody. I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican who does things right. And I think censorship is wrong. And I think the media is wrong. And I think social media is wrong. And I think that needs to be curbed. And when Trump declared war on them without planning anything, the goof that he is sometimes, um, unhinged, um, and he never, listen, he played the media just the way the media wanted him to play it. That's the thing. I thought the guy was smarter, you know, than he was. And he really wasn't. They destroyed him. And, you know, listen, they keep saying, oh, he's the first president to be impeached twice. Sure, by a partisan, you know, House of Representatives. And they have to wait until the Democrats take control of the Senate before, before they follow up. If I were uh, Tr Trump, what I'd do is I'd pardon myself. And listen, I would pardon every police officer who has been unjustly jailed and accused of racist crimes. I would pardon them too, because I think what they did to a lot of police, not all of them, some of them deserve to be arrested and prosecuted, and some of them did engage in excessive force. But every time some drug-addled, weapon-carrying street gang member refuses to listen to a police officer and by the way they're not all white police officers being attacked black police officers too um, they say that oh he shot him because he's a racist he had nothing to do with the fact that he was on drugs that he was carrying a weapon and he wouldn't listen to the police if a police officer tells you to do something do it the justice system is on your side if you do the right thing but if you think you're above the justice system, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Nothing's going to change. I'm going to tell you what, um, it's horrible, the hypocrisy of how the media uh, c covered the Black Lives Matter protests and the Black Lives Matter looting, as opposed to how they covered the D.C. protest and the D.C. protest looting, because that's basically what happened in D.C. one day, seven hours of looting uh, by a small portion of the Washington, D.C. protesters. Tens of thousands, what, 500,000 protesters? And how many were arrested and involved in looting? I'm going to say a couple thousand. So what those th couple thousand did reflects on the other 500,000, that they're all rioters, according to people, morons like Anderson Cooper and insurrectionists and terrorists. That guy's a racist pig. You know, Anderson Cooper, I can't stand him. I, I, what a hypocrite he is. He doesn't have the cojones to stand up to me and debate me. He wouldn't do that because they're afraid. They're afraid of the truth. And then they look at the Black Lives Matter protests and the Black Lives Matter looting, and they separate it. But for Washington, D.C., it was all one, one big stereotype because that fit the media political narrative, and they got what they want. Black Lives Matter, they separated it. They separated the looting and said, oh, yeah, that's bad. But let's focus on the more righteous side of Black Lives Matter. They didn't say, let's focus on the more righteous side of the D.C. protesters who had a right to say what they wanted to say. Listen, I want to thank everybody for joining me this morning here at the Ray Hanania Show on WNZK AM 690 Radio. Please go to my uh, website at Hanania.com and uh, follow me there. And... Uh, if you have any questions, you email me. 
all right, at rghanania at gmail.com. You can send me an email. Go to hanania.com. you have any questions, I'm happy to help you. Don't be numbed up by the throttling of the news media. Don't be silenced by the throttling of social media. Under, stop focusing on Trump. It has nothing to do with us. It's the media that is wrong. They're the ones abusing their power. I want to thank Mike Jupka, at the, the producer over at WNZK, for helping us this morning, and Jerry Hubba for calling in. A great guy. We really appreciate it. Steve Newhouse and all the people on Facebook, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'm Ray Hannity. You guys have a great week. I'll be back hopefully talking to you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Views expressed on the preceding program may not necessarily be those of the owner or